Good day, guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the pre-built Ambient Linux images for the R36s, which were recently made available over on GitHub. This is pretty much full desktop Ambient, which basically turns the R36s into an actual pocket PC. This is pretty similar to a previous video I've done on turning the R36s into a pocket PC, only previously we did use a script that installed Xorg on top of ArcOS, and it was pretty unstable. Thankfully, this pre-built Ambient image is way more stable. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 11 PC now, and I've just opened up Chrome and gone to the GitHub link, which I will link down in the description below. There's a few different images available, but for this video, I just ended up going with Bookworm XFCE. It's worth noting the minimal images are just a base install with no desktop environment, which are ideal for a server, but not really great for turning the R36S into a little PC. To download, simply click on one of the builds. We'll also need something to actually write the image to our SD card, and I always like to use Rufus. Just scroll down. And I'll download the portable version, which at the time of filming is 4.9p. You'll also need something to extract the image from the archive we downloaded earlier from GitHub. And for that, I like to use 7-zip. If you don't already have it installed, just download it from 7-zip.org. Once everything's finished downloading, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. Inside, we should have our Ambient image we downloaded. Again, I went with Bookworm, XFCE, and also Rufus. If you didn't already have 7-zip installed, simply double click on the 7-zip installer and follow the on-screen prompts. Now we want to extract our image, just right click on it, go down to show more options, go to 7-zip, and go to extract to Ambien r36s bookworm xfce.img. You should have a new folder, double click on it, and inside should be our actual image file. From here, we want to insert our SD card that we'll be writing the image to. I'll just be using the Samsung Evo 64 gig SD card. If your computer doesn't have an SD reader built in, you'll also need a USB SD reader. Nothing special, just whatever's cheapest. Just inserting the SD card. Once it's inserted, go back to our downloads folder, open up Rufus. Click no for updates. Once it's opened, under device, you want to make sure your SD card is selected. So for me, it's E drive, 64 gig. It does say boot, that's just because I do already have an image flash to this. It's super important you do select the correct drive. You don't want to format the wrong one. Next, under boot selection, Leave it as disk or ISO image and click select. Go to your downloads folder where we extracted the image, open it up and simply double click on the ambient image. Once you've triple checked, you have the correct device selected. You can click start. You will lose all data on the SD card. So make sure it's either empty or you don't care if you lose anything. Just click start. It'll give you a warning saying you will lose all data. Click okay. If it mentions you have multiple partitions, click okay again. And now we just wait for the image to finish writing. It shouldn't take too long. Once it's finished writing, we can just click close. So that's pretty much it as far as installing Ambien goes. It does finish the rest of the setup on the R36S itself. Before we eject the SD card, let's take a look at disk management. So we can see here, mine is disk 2 at the very bottom. We've got a 256 meg boot partition, a 4.6 gig Linux partition, and the rest of it is unallocated. It should resize our Linux partition on the first boot to fill up the rest of the space. We'll take a look at the boot partition. There's not too much in here, but if we open up our screen files folder, we can see we do have multiple panels available. It is set up for panel four out of the box, which means it should also work on the R36H without needing to change anything. But if it's not working for you and you do need to change the screen panel it's using, it looks like it does use the multi-panel picker from the latest versions of ArcOS. If we go back to the root of our SD card, we can see there's a file called Pancho. We right click on it, go open with, go notepad, and we scroll down. You can see it does mention the same button combos as the latest version of ArcOS. So for example, if you wanted to use panel one, while the R36S is powered off with the Ambient SD card inserted, you would hold R1 and up on the D-pad and then power on the device while holding those buttons and it should change to that panel type. Panel two is R1 on right, panel three, R1 on down, panel four, R1 on left, and the other panels just use the A, B, X, Y buttons. I haven't been able to test this fully since all my devices do unfortunately use panel four, but if your device does use a different screen panel type, please let me know if this does work in the comments below. With that said, we'll close everything off and safely eject our SD card. We'll pop it back into our R36S and go through its initial boot setup. We're over on our R36S now, and I've just inserted the fresh ambient SD card we created. I've also got it plugged in charging, just because I did run it flat playing around with this ambient Linux. We get the ambient logo straight up, it's a nice sign. Looks like it's loading. Again, if there's nothing on the screen for you, try holding down the button combos mentioned earlier when powering it on. It does say fail to start the network traffic monitor, that's fine. You can just ignore that, it will continue to boot. It should hopefully continue setting up your Ambien. It should reset itself after it's finished its initial setup. Get the boot logo once more. We've got a mouse cursor on the screen, it's a good sign. It's like our desktop is loading. There's our on-screen keyboard. And that should be it. We are now loaded into Ambien Linux. It's worth noting, the first time I flashed this image to the SD card and booted it up, 
I did actually have a background. It wasn't solid black. So I'm not too sure why it's uh, not showing up this time. We'll zoom in on the screen a bit more so it's easy to see. Hopefully that's a bit clearer. And the background did appear when I pressed L2 to switch between the two desktops. So it might just have been a graphical glitch. Both joysticks move the mouse around. The left one is nice and slow and the right one is very fast. R2 is left click. So move the mouse, go R2, left clicks. R1 is right click. There we go. So pretty simple. You can toggle the on-screen keyboard on and off by simply left clicking on the four little squares on the top of the taskbar. So I've got two here for some reason but it's the right hand one for me. There's usually only one. So to disable it, just click it once and to bring it back up, click it again. To the right of that, you've got the two arrows. That's your network connection. To the right of that, you've got sound. And to the right of that once more, we have Q joypad. You do not want to click on this since you won't be able to exit out without an external mouse connected. If you do accidentally click on it, your best bet is just resetting the device. To the right of that again, we have R36S and clicking on it brings up your shutdown, restart, logout menu. In my tests, I did notice I wasn't able to get network working immediately after it completed its initial boot setup. And all I ended up doing was resetting it and it worked. So I'll do that now. Click on R36S, go to restart and click restart. So it's finished restarting. You'll notice there's only one of the on-screen keyboard toggle icons now. So I'm guessing it was a little bit glitchy on its first boot. Before we do anything, I do want to get internet access on this. So I think to start off, we'll try my USB wireless adapter. Just this TP-Link one here. As always, I'll be using a cheap USB-A to USB-C adapter. So I've plugged it in. We'll go over to our network. Just click on it. And it wasn't detected. That's a bit unfortunate. I think next we'll try this little uh, $2 one I got from AliExpress. And that did work. So now we have Wi-Fi. We should be able to go down to available networks. Just left click. And container. There it is there. Before I connect to that, I do want to see if USB tethering does work. So just on my Android phone, I've gone to hotspot and tethering. And you can see we've got USB tethering disabled. So I'll just plug in my USB-A to USB-C cable that came with the phone. And I've just plugged the other end into my USB adapter. Immediately, I got a low battery warning. It's because the R36S is uh, fairly low. Back on our Android phone, you can see we do have the option of USB tethering. So I'll enable it. And it is connected. So USB tethering works as well. To save power, I will go back to USB Wi-Fi though. I've just entered my password. We'll go connect. And hopefully it does say connected. There we go. Connection established. We're now connected. Awesome. Now we've got internet. Let's see what is pre-installed. Go to applications on the top left. So we've got terminal, file manager, mail reader, web browser. Under settings, we do have a lot. Nothing we want to change right now though. Under accessories, what do we have? Midnight commander, file manager, X archiver. So pretty standard. Any games installed? No games. That's just our... Mouse remap utility, graphics, document viewer, and view Neor. Not too sure what that is. Internet, we got Chromium and Firefox. Multimedia, no audio players, but we do have uh, Pulse Audio. Document viewer under Office. System, we got System Monitor. Take a look at that. So there's all the processes that are running. We'll go over to Resources. And all four cores of our CPU were detected. Pretty cool. You can see all four CPUs are under different loads. We've used half of our uh, RAM, so 512 out of one gig. Uh, there's no swap currently being used, but we do have a 500 meg swap. We've got network. Can we scroll down a little bit? That's pretty much it there. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at file system. So I can't see a large partition with the rest of our free space. Let's open up a file manager and see if it uh, did expand. Let's close this off. Applications again. We'll go Thuna File Manager. Go to Computer. Go to Properties on this one. Not sure what that is. File System. Just right clicking on it. Go down to Properties. Didn't help us too much. I think instead we'll close off our File Manager. We'll just open up Terminal and check there. So applications, Terminal, wait for it to load. There we go, on screen keyboard. We'll do D. F dash H for human readable. Enter, close that off. So it doesn't look like it actually expanded our SD card and used the rest of it. It's a bit of a shame. I didn't see G parted in here. I think we'll try and install something. We'll do sudo apt-get update. Not too sure what the default password is. We'll try blank. It was not blank. We'll try R36S. It was R36S. So the username and password for our user is R36S, R36S, nice and easy. 
while it's updating all the repositories, I think I will bust out my new old stock Targus USB hub, just USB 2, a bit hard to see, and I'll connect a USB keyboard. I've connected my USB keyboard along with the same wireless adapter. So now we'll do sudo apt get install. We'll see if gparted's in there. There we go, it is. We'll go yes. Looks like it's finished installing. We'll go to applications, should be under system. And there it is, gparted. Wants us to authenticate, so R36S once more. There it is. And sure enough, it did not automatically expand our Linux partition. So we do have quite a large unallocated chunk on our SD card. Not too sure if we can expand the partition it's running from. I'll try resize, I don't want to break anything. So I set the free space following to zero, which automatically maxed out our new size. I'll click resize. I really hope it doesn't break anything. Fingers crossed, resize. Now we have to apply our changes. Just click tick, click apply. It says it's completed, give it a close. So it looks like it did work. We'll close out of this, go back to our terminal. I'll type in df-h and sure enough, 55 gig free. So that is how you would expand it manually. Just use gparted. If you had access to a Linux PC, you could uh, do it on that as well. But it wasn't too hard doing it on the R36S itself. To make it a little bit easier to use, I'm also going to connect my cheap wireless mouse. Just over USB. There we go. I now have a USB mouse, keyboard, and wireless adapter connected. This really is turning into a little PC. We'll close out a terminal, and I think we'll try some web browsing. Let's use Chromium. A little bit slow to open. There we go. We'll just go to Google, and I think we'll start off by trying to install an ad blocker. We'll see if you block Origin Lightworks. Chrome Web Store. Got to scroll all the way to the right. It is still grayed out. Hopefully, when it finishes loading. There we go. Add to Chrome. Add extension. No thanks. I'm only using one tab. It is taking quite a while to actually uh, add this extension. There we go. Done. Now we'll go to YouTube. It's a little bit slow to load. There we go. Just about finished loading. We'll search for something. And we'll just try my most recent video. Stock Chrome OS on the Lenovo 500e Gen 2 Chromebook. We'll go full screen on the browser. It is still loading the web page. There we go, starting to load. Sounds working, obviously. Go settings, see what uh, it's set to. It is pretty slow. There we go. So it automatically went to 360p. We'll force it into that just so it doesn't try to change up or down. I'll pause it. We'll go full screen. We'll see if we can open stats for nerds as well. And we'll click play. It is dropping quite a few frames, but visually it doesn't look too bad. Seems to be dropping around 40%, so not ideal. We'll skip through and see if that works. It's not too bad. I'd say technically possible, but not really enjoyable, just uh, with how slow it is to actually load. We'll see if there's a package manager built in, so we don't have to use the uh, command line every time. Maybe under system, we've got synaptic package manager. Got to log in, R36S. It's a little bit slower loading. There we go. Click close on that. So on the top left hand side, we should have our categories. Scroll down, we go down to games. There we go, games and amusement. And I think we'll try something simple, 2048. Just double click on it maybe. And I'll click apply at the top to be installed. Just expand that, 2048. Unchanged everything else, click apply. And it should hopefully download and install our game. It is still installing. It's been about 30 seconds so far. And it looks like it's almost finished. There we go. We'll click close. We'll exit out of Synaptic Package Manager just to free up a little bit of resources. Now if we go to applications, hopefully there's a new entry in games. There it is, 2048. But unfortunately it didn't load. Not too sure what happened when installing it. Might take another look. Log in again. There we go, it's finished loading. We'll search for 2048. It says it's for text mode. Guessing that's why it didn't work. We'll try QT, although I'm not sure if that'll work. We'll try it anyway. Geez, there's a lot that uh, it wants to install, but that's fine. We'll mark it all. We'll click apply and we'll just sit back and wait for it to all download and install. That actually didn't take long at all, maybe a minute. We'll click close, close off package manager again. We'll go back to applications and down to games. Hopefully there's a second entry. There it is, QT. And fingers crossed, everything works. That looks promising. We'll go full screen. It looks like it's uh, not liking our resolution. I mean, it does work. I'm using the keyboard. I guess not all games will work on the R36S just because of the low screen resolution. In fact, we'll close this off and see what it's actually set to. 
Pretty sure this is a native 64480 panel. Let's go on to settings, display, and yeah, 640 by 480. That's our only option. Can I downscale? I can't downscale by default. Even the uh, settings window is a little bit cut off. There we go. Oh, I can scale down. We'll go 0 0.5. 0 0.5 apply. It did not like that. I do not want to keep it. So I guess that's just what we're uh, stuck with. The desktop's gone again, but if I change to workspace one, there we go, it comes back. I think before we snap it off, we will safely power off our R36S. So again, top right, go to shut down. You can also hold the power button down for about five or 10 seconds and it does bring up the shutdown log off window. And let's click shut down. And we'll put the SD card into our R36H. So we're over on our R36H now. I have plugged it into charge as well since it is uh, almost flat. And I've put the SD card from our R36S straight into here. Haven't made any changes whatsoever. This is still using the same screen panel that we had earlier and we'll just power it on. There's our Ambient logo. Looks like it is gonna work. Got our mouse cursor again, it's a good sign. Sure enough, works perfectly out of the box on the R36H as well. Overall, it is a fun little OS to try out. And as mentioned, it does seem to be a lot more stable than the custom Xorg running on top of Arc OS. It's not the fastest, but that is just because of the low end hardware. There was great USB wireless adapter support, as well as USB tethering from a phone. So that's great. Out of the box, it does come with a few things pre-installed like Chromium, but unfortunately it didn't come with Gparted. It's a bit of a shame it didn't auto expand the Linux partition upon first boot to fill out the rest of the SD card, but that was pretty simple to do after we installed Gparted. So not really a major issue there. Web browsing wasn't too bad on this. YouTube was pretty slow, but it is a pretty uh, heavy site, but I'm sure things like Wikipedia would run fine. I do have a few pretty cool things I want to try with this in the future, so we'll definitely revisit it at some point. It's also worth noting the R36S multi-boot image, which we have made a video on fairly recently, has been updated, and there are a bunch of different Ambient builds available for it. So with that, you could boot ArcOS, Rocknix, as well as Ambient Linux on the side, all on the same SD card. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.